I've had psychiatrists tell me, you're my last shot. So if you can, you can't hurt them, can you? And I said, nope. So they said, then do whatever you need to do because we're running out of options. So I said, okay, well, I'll see what I can do. So that, uh, do I expect it, you know, knock it out the park necessarily? I kind of do because I believe always everybody can be helped. There's always hope. Healing is happening at every moment for you. So I'm back in the office today. Again, this is kind of unusual for me to be in here, but just worked out conveniently. I'm waiting to go pick my son up. Um, and I had a little bit of time left because they're running late from hiking. So I had to finish a report to help somebody out. And I wanted to let you guys know, um, somebody asked me the other day about um, my success rate. They said, well, how often do you actually help those people? And I said, that's a good question. And um, I know my numbers. I have to look some of them up. But in general, overall, we've got a 90% success rate with anybody we take into the office. So there's always tough cases. It's just how it is. And I'm not going to get into those reasons why. Sometimes we can't uh, get the results we want. But there's always going to be tough cases. And they stick with you. But we won't focus on that. We're going to focus on like 90%. And how do I know that? Because I track it. Um, we keep records of things. We have numbers on things. I have the data to support it. Uh, certain conditions or signs and symptoms somebody might come up with, people come in with, are much higher even. Um, other things, I think that number is lower than I want it to be because I'm, I take a lot of things that nobody else wants. I take a lot of things that I don't know if we can help you, but they've gone through so many other things at that point. They're so desperate. I get cleared with, I talk to their physicians, their psychiatrists, everybody. We get real clear like, you know, they go, they, I've had psychiatrists tell me, you're my last shot. So if you can, you can't hurt them, can you? And I said, nope. So they said, do whatever you need to do because we're running out of options. So I said, okay, I'll, I'll see what I can do. So that, uh, do I expect to, you know, knock it out the park necessarily? I kind of do because I believe always everybody can be helped. There's always hope. Healing is happening at every moment for you. So... I, I thought it was just interesting the day I was in here tracking somebody, um, something, and I saw the thing. I said, I should show you guys what this looks like. So yesterday I was in here with Jeff and Lee, and I showed you kind of our process of what a cue is and how, you know, what a cue kind of looks like. And I think I'm going to throw all that stuff up on the website. i got to get somebody to do that for me. Um, so it's going to take me a minute because I'm not doing it myself anymore. Um, so I'll get some of that on there so you guys can see what, brain maps look like what what are you paying for when you come in here what's some of the stuff you're going to walk out with just outside of what i'm going to tell you and how i'm going to um, problem solve um okay so tracking so we have everybody set up a tracker when they come in what does that mean um it's this long little process that they don't like dealing with of going through um uh, picking all these symptoms. Basically, I kind of go with what are the top five to six things you want us to help you with? And then we put them down. So here is actually somebody's tracker that we keep on a HIPAA compliant online server. And we go ahead and, and um, track things. So this is a little boy. And these are the things we're looking at with him. I'm going to pop over to the screen real fast. I'm going to make sure I keep his name off, so that's already done. And he's only had one, two, three, four, five, six sessions. And these are what um, parents tell us about the things that they are most concerned with and what we're going to do. So I'm going to show you the actual screen and what we're doing and what neurofeedback does and why I know, you know, I'm not making these numbers up. We track it. I, I see exactly what's going on and I, I can tell. What do I do for ADHD? What do I do for anxiety? How do I handle sleep disorders? What, what are, what's my success rate? Well, I know because I write it down. So I'm going to flip it so you guys can see. All right. So here's one of my screens. And what we're doing is keeping track of here's the date. So this is like um, October 2nd, 6th, 9th, 11th, 18th, and what is that? The 20th. So this is when this child comes in for training. Um, this is actually we do neurofeedback. So the parents told us this is where we were when we started. What's the degree of difficulty with short-term memory on this child? Ten. Okay. Then we come in and it's a seven, seven, six. Okay. Pop back up. Now we're down to a four. Okay. How's our inflexibility? A, a rigid child who has a lot of crying. Um, ADHD, very emotionally reactive. We're looking at emotional activity, um, problems with attention. So 
we're gonna I'll show you this is how I know right so this is where I'm looking at inflex how rigid and oppositional is this child we pick these I know what's going on with this case eight dropping and we get up and then we've tick back down again we've just started training here's the crying you know we're watching the flow and so our job is here what's happened on this day because we saw a tick uh, almost in everything of what happened here emotional reactivity a nine and we're just getting better okay that's the big one and what's happened here when you see in the next one the attention problems have gone up we've gone oh look at this okay but this isn't bad news as I explained to um, the mom the other day, I'm gonna flip over, but this is how I know, we've just gotten started. This is gonna be a very big case. It's a young boy with some severe, severe brain dysregulation, but this is what we do every visit. How is it going? Track it, track it, track it, track it. You know, we're, we're gonna look at everything objectively right in our um, EEG patterns and what we have going on in training, and we're gonna look at what you're telling us subjectively. I track it. You tell us, we write it down. It's all here graphed out for us. So I can look, if I don't start seeing this cycle out, I'm you know, gonna change my protocol, go to a different location, make some decision. But I'm gonna say this, this is our big one. So I'm gonna flip it on this. Emotional reactivity and how much crying and how much fighting this young little boy is going through because the pro why this is going on is because he does not feel well. You don't behave well when you don't feel well. So I'm gonna Okay, so with that, already this, um, you know, yes, we're carrying an anxiety diagnosis, an ADHD diagnosis, sensory integration disorder diagnosis. Um, there's quite a few other little diagnoses that this kid has had attached to him. Um, I'm not going to get into any more about what uh, he's been through in his life, but I have some severe deprivation that I'm trying to address, some severe metabolic problems, lack of oxygen. I have some blood um, problems, blood flow problems going on with his body as well as his brain. Um, so there's a lot more than just even brainwave activity and brain locations. Uh, there's been some brain trauma. Uh, so he's responding very well, very quickly to the point. Mom was in here the other day. Um, he was training in run room. She was being uh, educated a little bit on his last session um, with another clinician. So Jeff and I were speaking with her going over some of the numbers and her statements to us was, I cannot believe the difference we've seen in him this fast. This is absolutely mind blowing, remarkable. She, she, the mom has gone through neurofeedback for herself, but really watching it happen with this child and her family and how it's changed the dynamic, the dynamic, she said everything has changed. Like the fact that he's not crying and explosive, like we have a calm, happy child again. She goes, yeah, he's bouncing around all over the place with the attention, like he doesn't listen because he can't hear us. I'm like, well, that's normal because I'm feeding his brain again. So like he actually has some energy to function. He's not just, you know, zombied out. Um, but it's, she goes, it's changed our life. The dynamic, like the, the stress is just dropped out. So you have a whole family that can be affected by one person who's really, really struggling. So, um, it's very cute and very sweet. Uh, she said, she's like, I, I, I'm telling everybody to come here. I keep telling everybody, I told my therapist she needs to come. I, she needs to start learning what you're doing. And I said, okay, good, good. Uh, she goes, but I'm getting nervous that I'm like going to lock myself out of my appointments. I said, oh, no, no, no. He's locked in the schedule. I will always have room for him until, you know, he's totally okay. I thought it was really cute. Um, but it's what we want. We want as many therapists to know what we're doing. And uh, because we get results fast. Um, this little boy, how much talking and, and play therapy does he really need when there's this massive um, brain dysregulation? And we can just go in there and quiet those centers that are overactive and stimulate the parts that are underactive. The brain wants to respond. It just needs the right input. So um, there's my little lesson again on neurofeedback and how the brain responds. But I wanted to show you we track. You know, we're not in here just guessing and we're going to do this many number of sessions and, you know, good luck with that at the end. We're gonna, we, we track this way. And we've also added in... Um, Cognitive uh, performance testing. So CNS Vital Signs is a uh, company we're now using. You have to be nine years old um, to do it. So our kids who are six and seven, like this kid is under nine. So I couldn't do full battery of, of um, verbal memory, visual memory, executive speed. It's, it's not exactly an IQ test, but it's a very um, well accepted psychological, neurological assessment of psychomotor speed, you know, cognitive function. So we've added that in and I've just included it, no charge. 
um, for all my clients, I'm gonna I take the hit on that because I think it's that important for pre and post testing for another very objective measure to show you how your brain function has changed. So we track, we look for what has changed, what do you tell me has changed, and what do we see that has changed? Because um, you know both matter. Okay. So anyway, that's all I wanted you to see is kind of some of the tracking and how I can know all these things and be able to say, well, it used to be this, now look at it. And it, you know, because everybody, you kind of forget. So anyway, that's the end of what we do. Um, go get some neurofeedback. You know, if you're in Atlanta, call us. If you're not in Atlanta, go somewhere else, man. Neurofeedback rocks. All right. See ya.